After last week's guest, Curly, I'm delighted to have a, a goalie pod again. I do love my goalkeeper pods. And I'm really delighted to welcome in Cholton goalkeeper, Harry Isted. Welcome, mate. But I remember like the first session, like, I didn't have any basic training of being a goalkeeper, so I was all over the place. And I remember like going to bed, like, I don't never want to do that again. Like I hated that so much, but I just learned to love it. To turn fresh when I was 17, and that was kind of like, oh, wow, like dream come true. And, and then I said, what, what about Jack Walton? And oh, we're bringing Jack Walton in here. I was kind of like, oh. Right, so it's kind of like one of them deals. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just having that togetherness and that, like, I, would, I want to do that for my teammate. Like, that's a massive reason why they are where they are today. And it's no surprise to me. Well, a bit of a surprise at the Premier League. Premier League is, uh, <laughs> everyone's a little bit surprised. When, you, when you're called upon, just to do a job, don't need to be a hero and don't need to be the villain kind of thing. But as a goalkeeper, you put yourself in the best position to save a ball. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, you, you're hoping he hits you. Being a professional goalkeeper, I definitely understand the importance of recovery for the next performance. I've finally found the perfect product to help me recover. Introducing the Mito Mobile Flex from Mito Red Light. Their industry leading devices harness the power of red light therapy, emitting red low light wavelengths through the skin. This safe and effective process kickstarts natural tissue recovery and a huge range of added benefits. Whether I'm at home relaxing or whether I'm in the studio researching goalie or no goalie, Myto Mobile Flex is designed to help me recover at my ultimate convenience. Its portability is unmatched and it even comes in its own handy travel case. You can effortlessly slip it into your suitcase or your kit bag. That's what makes it so travel friendly. The Mobile Flex offers freedom and flexibility, saving you the need to find a plug with up to three hours use on one single charge. That's enough charge to get me through two 90 minute matches to help my recovery. It's an on the go solution that gives you no excuses but to aid your recovery. My favorite feature about the Mobile Flex unit is its spot treatment capabilities. Whether it's a sore knee, hand, foot or ankle after any intense matches, the device delivers targeted and immediate red light therapy exactly where you need it. The Mito Mobile Flex unit helps keep me in top form and you can trust in it too. Hit the link in the description below for your 10% saving using code FLEX10 from the Yours Mine Away podcast. Now that's a great save by Mark Howard. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yours Mine Away podcast with me Mark Howard. Uh, after last week's guest Curly, I'm delighted to have a, a goalie pod again. I do love my goalkeeper pods uh, and I'm really delighted to welcome in Cholton goalkeeper Harry Isted. Welcome mate. So I stood, but that's all right. I stood, sorry, mate. <laughs> Harry, I stood. Oh, I've even got that wrong at the start. What a bad start. <laughs> like I said, uh, you're at Cholton and that now and stuff. Uh, you've recently moved this summer. Uh, how's it been? No, yeah, I've settled in really well there. It's a great it's a great dressing room there, great staff. And uh, yeah, it was, I thought it's always tough sometimes going to a new club and that, that settling period. But I think going at the start of the season and, and getting that pre-season trip out of the way, I think you, you settle in, in nicely. It's a great initiation, that pre-season trip. And, you know, like going away, getting to know yeah. 20 personalities is the hardest bit almost. But yeah, yeah. when you're living with a, a team for a, a week or whatever it is, it, it helps, doesn't it? It's just more of that, just getting the awkwardness out of the way and getting you're always going to end up at a karaoke bar or, or, or singing a song yeah. and that, that famous... Uh, that last trip, the the night out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, you're That's when you get to know out. people. Did a you bit have to better. do an initiation song? Um, I well, we went to a karaoke bar and there was there was, there was a fair few uh, new faces there. So yeah, we all, all had a good time on the karaoke. What did you sing? I'm not going to ask you to sing. Don't I worry. sang uh, Lou Fandros Never Too Much. Great song. Yeah. That's a really good song. Uh, how was the end of the, the night out as well? Yeah, just usual, isn't it? Just the lads usual. Just yeah, lads. Few... Yeah. It's Obviously, you're there to take a good time. You've got a flight in the morning. you just got to make sure you get on that flight in the morning. That's it, yeah. Where did you go? <laughs> I went to Marbella, or just outside Marbella. So, yeah. Banus was the, the nearest nice. town to us. Did you get a little golf afternoon in or not? Um, yeah, we had, we had one one uh, afternoon off. And, uh, yeah, we've got, got some golf in there. Yeah, nice, that. Is there a few of you that play golf as well? There's actually, yeah, there is a few. Like, the main is about, i say there's eight, eight to ten of them. And they're all probably similar standard, probably play off 18, 20. Yep. I'm probably just in the league of my own there. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you dropped in your handicap just before at six. I was yeah. like, that's pretty impressive. That that's a lot of golf that's played that, or from a young age. I think it's just yeah. I had lessons when I was young, and that kind of gave me the the basics. And I've just well, when you play football, you just find the time to play golf, and I've, I've just got better over time. Yeah. Yeah, natural sportsmen, mate. All goalies are as well. Yeah, all mate. goalies we can, are. We yeah. can play every sport. 
not not the best, but we can play every <laughs> sport. Right, let's crack on with our. Uh, I've got a couple of quick fire questions just to get to know you. Uh, dead simple. Right, catch or parry? Catch. Tea or coffee? That's a neither. No, nah, it's a coffee in the morning, tea at night. Oh, nice. Right, okay. You know, don't want caffeine before bed, nah. do you? Right, fair enough. Uh, play short or kick it long? A good mix. <laughs> good answer. Right, your favourite ever goalkeeper? Casper uh, Schmeichel. Yeah. Yeah. What a keeper, by the way. You'd have been watching him. Like, obviously, you're quite a bit younger than me, but in some good years at Leicester and stuff like that. I was watching, so I was, I'm was. i a Leeds fan. So he went, came on loan to Leeds and... That's that's the first time I saw him. I think before that I was watching like Paul Robinson when he was at Leeds. Yep. And then I had David James because I was at Pompey Academy Class. as a youngster. And obviously Joe Hart, England's number one. But yeah, Casper yeah, Schmeichel was one that I've kind of more not based my game around, but I, I looked up to him and be like, I want to be like him. That's the keeper I want to be. Good. I yeah. like that. All right, long sleeve shirts or short sleeve shirts? Goalie kit size. I'm gonna say short sleeve. Yeah, yeah, with an underarm with an underneath. Under I've, yeah. I've adapted to that this year. Yeah. I used to like a long sleeve, but pull it up a bit. Yeah, I'd, I'd always be a yeah, pull up yeah, to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm a I'm a short sleeve now. I yeah. quite like it. That, I, but I train like that. That's what I mean. I've you train with your under armour on and yeah. your and your short sleeve training top. So yeah, it's, it's I think I, yeah, I've got used to that. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Uh, World Cup or Champions League? World Cup. Yeah. Uh, movie or box set? Movie. Right, and then last one. It, this is a, a last minute uh, of a game one, right? So save a penalty to win the game or go up and score a goal. That's got to be score a goal. Yeah, and that. has to be score a goal. <laughs> yeah. I'm so pleased. I love it when people say that because that's the truth. Other people are lying when they say they want to save that's a penalty. You're a goalkeeper. Goal. You want like, to go and score a goal. The more You're more likely to save that pen, but yeah. going up and, and scoring that winner or, yeah. Oh, you thought about the celebration goal. you'd do? Ah. Uh, I think I'd just run back. Run, well, I don't know. You'd get bundled, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd you get caught get up bundled. with other players. But I'd love I'm... to run off to the court, drug for it. That'd be a good one, that. Right, uh, I'm going to kick this off for an usual question, but uh, why goalkeeping, Harry? Well, initially it was centre-half. I was uh, signed uh, Pompey as a centre-half as a youngster, like under eights, under nines. And, uh, and then, yeah, I think we got to under 11s and we needed a goalkeeper for the weekend because our keeper wasn't available. And uh, we had like a little tryout of all the outfield players and I, t I was the best out of the outfield players and I think we won the game 5-0 against Bristol Rovers or something like that. And uh, I, Not that I didn't look back uh, since then, but I just really enjoyed it. Did you get a bug for it then? Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah. But I'd always like, in the garden with my mate, my best mate from back home, uh, I'd always, well, we'd take it in turns to, to go and goal and I always loved it then, yeah. so yeah. You just used to go in and recreate someone else's saves. I remember when I was playing, obviously I had an older brother and I would just go in goal because he was the older brother. Yeah, I'd yeah. always like be watching like match of the day at the time and trying to recreate a save that they did or shouting the name out like Seaman and tipping <laughs> one round the post. That's always like what I remember, my old man coaching me. Uh, did you have much coaching then? Um, I, I didn't have any coaching until they kind of said like you are good in goal and then the, the lad our keeper that was at the at the age group at the time got released at the end of that season and they said like look we'd like you to go in and see the keeper coach and, and do work with him and see see where this could go and it was uh dave coles at the time yeah but he, he, he what a goalkeeper coach and he was looking after like the academy like all the way through to to david james like the, yeah. the first team but i remember like the first session i like i didn't have any basic training of being a goalkeeper so i was all over the place and i remember like being a 10, 11 year old and going back into the car like, afterwards and going to my head, like, I don't never want to do that again. Like, I hated that so much, but I just learned to love it. Like, just out of your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you said, you, you learned to love it. Is that just from going back and then starting to pick up the fundamentals of goalkeeping? Yeah, just picking up the fundamentals because once you've got that, that base, like everything becomes so much easier, I think. Yeah. From there, you went to, did you go straight from Portsmouth to Southampton? Yeah, I went straight from Portsmouth to Southampton. A bit yeah, controversial, yeah. that. A little not bit, for a yeah, child, yeah. Not for a kid, but... I mean, there wasn't, yeah, as a... as a. It's not going to get uh, mad write-ups, but... Shit, yeah, but as, as a youngster, you've got... You're not really going to move that far to a club, so it's either your Portsmouth, Southampton, Brighton, that that kind of... Yeah. Down that way, Bournemouth. Yeah, and how did that all come about? So I was... There was another goalkeeper at the time, I remember, and he was... We were, he probably got to, like, under 12s, under 13s, and he was probably already six foot. Oh, wow. and, and obviously they've... 
gone over him, so I didn't really play as much anyway. And then Portsmouth were just going into administration, so I think like the facilities and the training facilities weren't great either. And I kind of wasn't really enjoying it anymore. And then the opportunity came. Like one of my PE teachers when I went to high school was working with Southampton at the time as a coach, maybe for the, the under 15s, under 16s, yeah. and he kind of got me a he he ran a like a training training center which got kids from who'd been maybe released by other clubs and they went and played against other clubs and would that would put you in front of kind of, of like an teams, open trial yeah. sort of thing yeah yeah exactly that and I played against Southampton in one of those games and they said yeah look, we'll, we'd like to have you on trial and yeah. that was it yeah is that a nerve-wracking time do you remember it I don't really remember it too much but I've, I've never really been like the nervous type like maybe nervous before but as, I think as soon as you get on that pitch like all the nerves just go because yeah. it's just feels like a natural place for you yeah yeah it clearly did something okay and they signed you though yeah um, yeah <laughs> obviously you're from that sort of area as well aren't you yeah so I'm from Chichester or a place called Selsey Selsey Bill in yeah. uh, West Sussex so yeah. probably 50 minutes to an hour away from Southampton yeah it's, it's obviously the location for your parents would have been a hard thing as well because yeah, yeah. you are limited to two or three clubs within your kind of encatchment area yeah, yeah, yeah. and that limits opportunity so it, sometimes it's a, a hindrance coming through at an area like that or it also helps because of there isn't many that will do that no yeah definitely i think there's there was a few lads that I've, I've, i think remember at ports there was a few lads like that come from over from like the isle of wight and, and places like that and Southampton, they had a, a scheme up in uh, Bath, so that was still quite far away. But yeah, I think living in a certain area is hard. Like you're gonna have to, or your parents are gonna have to, uh, to do all the travelling for you. And yep. if they, like, I've I've now in a position where I'm kind of paying my my dad back for <laughs> yeah, all, all yeah. the miles he's travelled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I bet they still come and watch though, as much as oh, they yeah. can. Doesn't yeah, they? all the time. Yeah, yeah. They're they're lucky enough now to be self-employed, so they can pick and choose whenever they want to work so yeah, yeah. brilliant they're, they're uh, every game home and away yeah Southampton have a great track record as well of bringing through players goalkeepers it must be uh, a great place to obviously think oh, I've got a chance here so you you feel like you've always got a chance at the Southampton Academy yeah or did you not look at it like that no I felt like I was at the right place and and they did things the right way of, of bringing through uh, bringing through players and not buying in players and, and kind of doing it that in yeah down that route and even so, when I was under, must have been yeah, under 15s, I kind of got offered like an early scholarship. And then in under 16s, I got offered like an early pro. So to turn freshman, I was 17. And that was kind of like, oh, wow, like dream come true kind of thing. And I think it was me and another lad called Josh Sims, who's at, I think he's at Ross County now. We were the, the two to kind of get everything early. Yep. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's a dream come true then. You think, yeah, like I'm on that pathway to to becoming a, a proper professional footballer. And then soon after that, you moved to Stoke, didn't you? Yeah, so things didn't work out with Southampton. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> in the football. end, that is football, yeah. And that, you're going to learn that. And Southampton were good as gold about it. I, I was coming up to like the last year of my contract, I think halfway through the year, I said like, or I went I went, and my dad didn't have an agent at the time. So my, my dad came in and he said, uh, like, what's the what's the score? Like, am I going to get a new contract? And I said at the moment, no, but you can either stay and, and work towards that or you can we'll, we'll let you go and try and find another club and that's kind of what I did I went to Burnley on trial and I wasn't big enough I wasn't tall enough <laughs> um but then I think it went traveled an hour down the road to Stoke yeah. and uh and yeah that that went well and was there for 18 months yeah obviously uh those sort of a knockbacks can proper dampen you or hurt you yeah you you obviously didn't take it that way you took it as a real positive and you just went no I'm, I'm gonna crack on I'm gonna go Burnley I'm not gonna sit at Southampton and see it out i think yeah i think that would have been the the well not for me it wouldn't be the easy thing for some people like that's the easiest thing to do and yeah. the most comfortable thing to do but it's not i felt like i wasn't wanted there but at, at one point i'm not going to be wanted and they're going to bring someone else in anyway so yeah. there's no point wasting that that time like it's your time you're wasting and you need to get out there and yeah and, and, do, and do what you need to do and then that's when you moved to luton after that anyway yeah yeah so i I did 18 months at Stoke and that's an, that's, that's another a knockback. I thought I was getting another year contract there and I thought, yeah, they were like, yeah, you get, we'll, we'll offer you another year contract. And then it came to like two weeks before the end of the season and they're like, oh no, like we're bringing another goalkeeper. So it was another knockback. Like I hadn't really experienced that kind of knockback before, but like 
you you learn to know that that is football like it is a cutthroat business and things can happen like yeah. people can make promises and, and go back on them uh, that, it is a business uh we had Asmir Begovic on before and he he was just exactly the same he's 36 years old now and he's referring everything back to football's a business and yeah if things don't work out at one they might work out another you just got to keep going keep grinding away and it will it will happen for you definitely I, I remember the Asmir he was a Portsmouth with David James when I was a kid and I remember watching him train as well yeah, yeah. big beast as well wasn't <laughs> yeah it? absolute beast yeah. yeah good goalie too yeah. uh, and uh, from Luton you spent a really good six years there developing uh, and you end with some good loan spells as well that that I, I'm a massive promoter of the loan system uh, especially for goalkeepers I think if you can go out play games as much as possible I think as early as possible as well exactly yeah because yeah. it will only make you realise the game slightly different and you need mm. to be physically stronger you need to be better and you, it makes you more competitive was you, was you the same? I think in my first year there, I think I went out on loan for a month. Like they call it like work experience, like youth kind of loan. So yeah. I went out for a month to the Evo Stick South to Chesham United. And that was kind of my first taste of men's football. And there's something like on the line like there is three points in the day. Like it might not be the top league or whatever like that, but you're, you're learning how to win a game of football and, and what you will need to do. Yeah. It's totally different from youth team football where you're building towards an end of a season, a league or whatever, but you're just developing, aren't you? Yeah. But when you go out on loan, it's about winning and losing. Yeah, yeah, it's literally, yeah, it's costing, well, like you say, like they they do have managers and it could cost their jobs yeah. and, and obviously you're playing with players that could have an extra 20, 30 quid win bonus yeah, <laughs> on yeah. top of that, like that they want. Like. Yeah, of course, yeah. And like, did you feel that like that helped you develop uh, as a person as well because you you were part of that team you're part of teams then being yeah. out on loan that could cost other people money so you took more responsibility on your, upon your shoulders i think yeah there's a lot, lot of, if there's more pressure on you but there is that responsibility of and you understand game management more and i think it's just a, a matter to do it as early as possible i did it when I, I think i must have been 20 at the time and if i did that when i was 18 19 like i feel like i'd have been way ahead of the game that kind of thing yeah yeah and then you had a, a couple of other loans as well to oxford city and wildstone yeah so oxford city that that was another i think i was a i've only really done like a month loan like i've never i think wildstone the year after when they went to the national league i did more than a couple of months but kept getting recalled by loom because there was like injuries to the first team keepers so yeah. i had to come back and be on the bench and stuff like that um but yeah like that step up like step up to Conference South Oxford City and Willstone at the time, then Willstone went up to the National League and then being in the National League, which is a tough league, like it's Nas tough National league. league and I think I think League Two and National League, like there's not too much separating them at yeah. all. No, obviously I'm now in League Two and last year we was in the National It's tough. It is a tough They're league. Tough yeah. league. It's it's physical. <laughs> like uh, last year, my first few games it was an eye opener to how tough I've never played in National League before. Mm. And it was an eye opener to me. I didn't realise like how physical it would, how, how many balls would be coming in the box. And yeah. For someone Different that, challenge, isn't it? Like, yeah. I, I've had a, quite a long career, but and then to, to be totally taken out of that comfort zone almost yeah. and like the game changed, I was like, right, I need to adapt to this. I need to be the one that I need to do this in training. I need to prepare myself to do this because I hadn't experienced it before. It's a total eye opener. It's, I'm kind of the opposite, isn't like I'm learning, like you've you've yeah. had your career and then National League, the like first time you played National League yeah. and then you realise that like I was there like, I kind of not that I knew what what was going to happen, but I knew it was going to be physical. Like I knew it was proper men's football. Yep. Like it's like like I said, like pretty much league football. Like I think it's really similar to League Two. Yeah. And yeah, like balls in your box and just having to deal with that and having to just grow, like because you basically grown into a man. And if you're not cut out for it, you'll you'll get found out like yeah, so will. easily. And, and the dark arts as well of people yeah. like bumping you on corners and. <laughs> fouling you and yeah. refs don't give it to you in the national league at all nah. they don't help you out but nah. you get back into league football and the refs will protect you a bit more hopefully yeah yeah they do <laughs> i promise you they do uh your spell at uh luton was over six years and that that must have been an incredible place for you then because you obviously were happy there comfortable there but they also developed you a lot yeah i, I developed yeah the most i've i've developed as a keeper there um from going out on loan and, and being with working with Kev Deard and Kev Pilkington, top goalkeeper coaches, and turning to the keeper I'm now, and like, I wouldn't be able to to do what I do w without their kind of trust in me and and their helping me progress. Yeah, yeah. The importance of a good goalie coach, especially when yeah. you're that age coming through, is so important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's just 
bring into sessions like what is going to happen in a match and there's obviously got every goalkeeper coach works different ways but just looking at the research of where goals go in and, and what's going to happen and obviously you, you get threats you go through threats on like a Thursday or something like that of what, what yeah. the team on a Saturday is going to do and how they score and and what happens there and yeah the, the homework they do and, and the sessions they put on were yeah, unbelievable yeah. Did, did they work much uh, with you as a person as well like what your the mentality aspect sort of stuff yeah I, th I think going in like as a, as a kind of a youngster at, at Luton and had Kev did and was there first and he it was like he, I was his son like his, his protege like kind of thing I was his yeah his project and uh, he, he helped me like massively and I think that was a a big thing like someone have like someone being there for you got like, your back you, you could kind of speak to them yeah i think that's massive yeah and obviously when you have someone like that that does put their arm around you when you need it putting around or pushes you harder when you need to be pushed harder yeah. you end up growing a bit more as well because you're like ah, oh, they've i've got their trust and yeah i, I can trust you, get, them. you have that confidence don't you yeah, yeah you really do obviously at luton you you're uh, breaking into the first team and stuff was it did you find that that was a big step I think so. Yeah. I think I'd kind of never really experienced that. Like I had my my loan at Chesham, and then that was when they were in League Two. They went up from League Two, and I, I didn't. I wasn't on the bench at all in League Two. There was no injuries or anything like that. And then League One happened, and uh, one of the lads, one of the keepers, got I think a hernia injury, and that led me to being on the bench and then playing like in the EFL Trophy. Yeah. And that that was my kind of first taste of it, and. I did like I did well. I didn't I didn't look like out of place or anything like that. And then it was a bit I think more bad luck not bad luck and not in the sense of the team won League One and we went straight up to the championship and from League One to the championship is a whole different ball it's game. Like a, it's a step, massive it? step up, yeah. yeah. And to be ready for the championship when only playing a handful of EFL trophy games, like yeah. it's not really gonna happen. So I, I know I needed to take like go back out on loan and and get game time and try and play as hard as I could, which is hard because when you don't have as much recognition, like clubs aren't going to take that chance. So yeah. I kind of worked my way from Conference South Oxford City, played well against Wilston, and Wilston decided, oh, he's available for loan, so I did that and then did well for them. And luckily, they went up into the national league, and that that kind of worked out for me in that way. Yeah, that's always good. Uh, see where at Luton, then I know that. From the outside, it's a hard club to play for. But uh, speaking to James Shea, he's been on the show and stuff, and a, a great guy. Like he always talks about like the mentality of the dressing room and the environment and the culture at the club. Is it like that? Is it just that you're all in it together? That's yeah, it's exactly. I think that's a massive reason for why Luton have had so much success. Is like the from the recruitment of the players and the players in the dressing room, like all being together, no one doing it for themselves, and just having that togetherness and that like. I would, I want to do that for my teammate. Like I'd die for my teammate, and yeah. and, and that kind of thing. And uh, I think that's a massive reason why they are where they are today. And it's no surprise to me. Well, a bit of a surprise at the Premier League. The Premier League <laughs> is uh, everyone's a little bit surprised. But then I think when I came in in League Two, I thought like this team could be in the Championship, and within two seasons, crazy they were there. And yeah. I thought like it didn't surprise that didn't surprise me at all. Yeah. yeah. Then last year, the the loan move to Barnsley. Yeah, that must have been a bit of a whirlwind. That was yeah, it was it was a. Uh, it happened so quickly, and uh, I got pulled into the to the gaffer's office, and he said, like, Barnsley uh, are interested in taking you alone. And I was kind of oh, like, what about Brad Collins? He's there, um, and and then I said, what what about Jack Walton? And oh, we're bringing Jack Walton in here. I was kind of like, oh right, so it's kind of like one of them deals. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do it's think like it's like that out. first, yeah. don't you? Yeah, and then no, I was kind of. It's hard, because like, 'cause I'd I'd grown attached to, to Luton, like Luton was home for me, like I had people there that I I would speak to for the rest of my life and be friends with for the yeah. rest of my life. So it was kind of a hard one, isn't like, oh, this is this is kind of the end of, of my time at Luton and I initially wanted to go because obviously Jack Quant was coming on a permanent so well, I want to go on a permanent to Barnsley, like but obviously they didn't know much about me or anything like that. Maybe played a, f a few games f for Luton and the FA Cup game I played in. And uh, I said, OK, well, it gets me a chance to get in front of another team before the end of the season. And what happened next was I didn't really expect that. But Do you want to talk through that? Go on. Well, that must have been a surreal couple of months. Yeah, I, mean, I went there and I just, I, I just thought, 
getting the eye in training and trying to impress in training and and who knows what could happen and and I think I kind of got my first bit of luck with the with Brad Collins getting injured. Like unfortunately, he got he got injured too. Like it, it was kind of like the first game I was on loan there on the bench, and then he played kind of with it on the second game, and then he, he kind of he found out that he, he torn his quad, and then that kind of gave me eight or ten games to to kind of settle in and try and impress people and, and Bar- Barnsley did, were doing yeah. really well at the time yeah yeah, yeah. obviously that obviously helps massively yeah, yeah exactly that must have been a, a bit nerve-wracking but also a really good team to go into because you know they're playing well you've just got to be steady behind them you've just got to do your job be a, be a, a quiet goalkeeper almost yeah just when you when you're called upon just yep. do your job don't need to be a hero and don't yeah. need to be the villain kind of thing and uh yeah, the the team. I think we went on a, a. I don't know what the run was, but it was a pretty impressive run. Um, a lot of clean sheets and a, a few saves, which which catches the eye, and a yeah. few TV games as well, which helps. Yeah, and then you got to the playoff final. Yeah, you made one of the best saves ever, didn't you? So uh, it's it's hard because I I know it, it was a good save, it's but a, it's a really good save. You're not giving yourself enough but credit. I, but I know like it's that element of luck as as yeah. well. Like you but, as a goalkeeper, you put yourself in the best position to save a ball. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like you, you're hoping he hits you. Yeah, of course. But yeah. you, even your instinct to turn and just throw yourself at yeah. it is just something that you can't coach. That's a, a natural it's instinct. An inst- yeah, yeah, yeah. That's within you. So like fair play, it's a, it's a great save to make on that stage. Mm-hmm. It's just heartbreaking how oh, it ended yeah, up. Yeah, it's terrible, yeah. I think I'd rather have it gone to penalties and lost on penalties. Yeah, yeah, of course. For them to score in the last six seconds of a playoff final at Wembley. It's just more the fact of like, we'd be, be about, been down to 10 men for so long yeah. and it was like such a, a, like a stuck cruel in there, game and we, yeah. like, and we had chances to win it. And yeah, for it to end like that, it was absolutely heartbreaking, yeah. yeah. What was a... I'd, I'd, obviously, I don't want you to go too much, but the atmosphere afterwards, I've been... I've been on that receiving end. I didn't play. I was on the bench for losing in the playoff final in League One. And it, the the mood behind the scenes is, is horrible, isn't it? It's just like everyone's just so quiet. I think I just, I'm not like a, a negative person. Like we did what we did. We had a successful season at Barnsley. And yep. like the lads can be proud of, of, of what happened. And we were down to 10 men for however long. And see like all the lads on the floor like kill me, like, like get up, like. I know it's going to hurt, but just get inside and yep. d- we can deal with it in there. And then clapping the fans, I was kind of fine. And then I saw my parents like next to the dugout. I saw my mum, she was in tears. I was like, oh, I better get in the change room quick before yeah. I start getting Let's into get out tears. Of the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, obviously everyone's down in the change room. And But again, like Luton, though, it was such a good dressing room at Barnsley. And like I know people are going to be sad, but we all went back to the hotel and and had a, had a few drinks and some food with like close friends and family back there so yeah, you have to like, let the steam off and you have to like yeah. get get talking again you have to get your atmosphere going again and yeah. it is uh, i've done it we did it before we sat on a coach and we we all just sat together having a beer and yeah. it, it brings you back out of yourself again yeah i think there's no well there was obviously a point of, of dwelling on things but if you dwell on things too much like you just need to know that you've made a mistake or know you've you've lost a game of football and so you and well we didn't have a next game but normally you have another game yeah. after it to, to kind of put things right i think that was probably the worst thing is like that was the end of the season the last game of the season so uh, that was probably the tough toughest bit about it quite a whirlwind loan though uh in terms of like going in playing really well in a team that's very successful and then getting to wembley is yeah i think it's it's, it's, it's mad it's when you a, put it into context i think i don't know i think in football like i was owed a bit of luck and yeah. that that luck just happened and yeah. Obviously, I'm thankful for for Michael Duff for sticking with me throughout the whole thing because he yeah. could have done the easy thing and when Brad Collins was fit and just said, "Look, he's our he's our first first choice keeper. We're going to put him back in." And he didn't do that. He stuck by me, and yeah, I'm thankful for that. Yeah, except right, I'm going to I'm going to break away from your your career in that now though, and we're going to play a game of goalie or no goalie. Uh, my favourite quiz. Huge shout out to Forged Irish Stout for being part of this podcast. Listen to that beauty. An unbelievably smooth, creamy stout by Conor McGregor, the UFC legend. Not here to take part, but here to take over. Forged Irish Stout is on a mission to become the biggest Irish stout. Conor McGregor has taken over the whiskey game. Now he's about to take over the stout game. 
Me and my guests will be enjoying a few cans in the next few episodes. If you fancy checking it out too, make sure you hit the description below and find out where you can get Forged Irish Stout. Forged Irish Stout will be available in Asda nationwide come August. Let's get back to the podcast. I was briefing you on the rules before. So I've got five current international goalkeepers. All have been in recent squads, by the way. Okay. Five current. And then I've got five other names from around the world or people you might have heard of. Okay. Or might not have heard of. Uh, one point for each correct answer. Yeah? You ready? Yeah. You reckon you'll do all right? Let me get my scoreboard out because I can't count. <laughs> Right, number one, Kevin Mir. Goalie. He is a goalie. Yeah, great start. Colombia and Athletic Nacional goalkeeper, Kevin Mir. I thought Mir was, I thought it was going to be like Canadian or something like that. Yeah, it's no, not a bad shout. Yeah, Colombia. Right, number two, Robbie Berger. No goalie. He is not a goalie. He is the host of Bob Does Sports. I watch that a lot as well. I know you do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Been trawling through your social media, mate. I know I know a lot about you. Bobby Bell, yeah, Bobby yeah. Fairways. <laughs> His impressions when people like when people are walking down the fairway and he shouts abuse at pros is unbelievable. Have you seen him when he heckles people? He just heckles teams? people. We've got John Rahm oh. and people like that walking down. <laughs> His best mate on the show, Fat Perez, is one of my favourite oh, people he's incredible. I've ever seen. How good him. is he at golf? He's so good. <laughs> what about when he putts and he's celebration? He does the, the Euro away. step. And yeah. Stuff. Oh, my God. It's one of the best things. Oh, it's, well, that's one of my favourite things to watch. Thing is on he, YouTube. Fat Perez is so good at golf and the other two are terrible. Terrible. It's not terrible. Fat Perez's putting is it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> he could be on tour. Yeah. Right. Uh, number three, Franco Israel. Goalie. He is a goalie. Sporting and Uruguay goalkeeper. Good start. It's three out of three, mate. Flying. Franco Israel. At number four, Dietrich Matschitz. <laughs> you don't like the name of that, do you? <laughs> Say it again. I've said that really well, then. I'm quite impressed with that. Dietrich Matschitz. Goalie. He is not a goalie. <laughs> he is the Formula One Red Bull racing owner. Do you want to have a go at his name? No. Nope. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. <laughs> we'll take that one then. Uh, right, number five, Darius Rucker. He's a country singer, so no. Yes, that. nice. I like that you know that. Do you know his song? Wagon like, Wheel. Wagon Wheel. It's yeah. one of my favourite songs as well. Great song. <laughs> I've seen that you follow a few country singers. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't think you followed him, and I was like, I'll chuck this one in as I a curveball. I know my country music. Yeah, yeah good. good. You're a big that. fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah massive fan of country music. Luke yeah. Combs' favourite. Luke Combs. Yeah, I'm trying to get tickets for. I think he's in October. Yeah. The prices are a joke. Are they? Yeah. Uh, like 500, 600 quid a ticket, like yeah. for the bog standard ticket. Uh, his uh, rendition of Fast Car is one of the best oh, songs. Incredible, yeah. Yeah, oh, I love that. I'm well pleased with that. Right, number six, Thomas Kaminsky. Just signed for Luton, didn't he? Is he a goalie or no goal? He's a goalie. <laughs> he is a goalie. He is a Belgium goalie, formerly of Blackburn. Well, just signed for Luton, yeah. yeah. I thought I'd just throw a curveball oh, in Kaminsky, there. I was like, it is Thomas, yeah. yeah? <laughs> TK, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm well. out to try and trick you, I told you. Right, Konstantinos Panagi. Goalie. He is a goalie, mate. He is Cyprus goalkeeper and Ammonia. Not Ammonia. Constantinos Panagia. That's great pronunciation, that one, Ben. Producer Ben is cracking up in the corner. He normally heckles me. Nah, it probably is spelt wrong. I've read it nicely, though. Right. Number eight, Dario Sar Saric. Goalkeeper. He is not a goalkeeper. You like basketball? Yeah, okay, yeah. Golden State Warriors, Croatian basketballer. So I just thought, yeah, it sounds like a goalkeeper. Yeah, it does it? sound like a goalie, doesn't it? Yeah, I've, I've tricked you with one there. Seen you follow Golden State, mate. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. It's just Steph Curry, isn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I told you, I'm trying to work no, out like, clever, yeah. who you are as a person as well. Right, number nine, George Petrovic. Goalie? He is a goalkeeper, mate. He is Serbia and New England Revolution goalkeeper. You ever pronounce that one? Oh, wow. That's not how you spell George, is it? That's Do Timmy Deezen. not Doherty, is it? Yeah, it's Timmy Deezen now. <laughs> Petrovic is right, though, definitely. Yeah. All right. Number 10, Giada de Laurentiluz. I've pronounced that one terribly. <laughs> that. 
Giardé. Giardé? Yeah. Giardé de Laurentiis. I can't be a keeper. Why? It sounds like a place. <laughs> it's not a place. But it's not a goalkeeper either. I'm not telling you that bit. Goalie or no goalie? No goalie. No goalie is correct. She is a famous Italian-American chef. Knew it. <laughs> I cannot pronounce names. I, I need lessons. That is a hell of a name. It's a nice name, Where's though. Where's she got the extra eye from? Yeah, I don't know. There's, that's a spell check one. <laughs> Eight out of ten. Got to be happy with that, Harry. Over the moon with that. Yeah, yeah. very good score. Eight out of ten. Good scoring, mate. Good scoring. Puts you near the top, that. What's the best? Ten out of ten. T- you got yeah, ten out of ten? Uh, Emily uh, Ramsey, uh, Everton goalkeeper. Nice. Yeah, she got ten that's out of ten. First ever one. Only ever one as well. We've had a few come close. That's a few give her a good run. Yeah, she, she did really well. Right, uh, I want to get onto a bit of content creation. Uh, Declan McCarthy obviously recommended me highly, uh, recommended you highly to me. Said that you've done a bit of work together, and that is that something that happened naturally, or is it just you started to look for that sort of? I think uh, when I did it, I was I'd have been like third, fourth choice at Luton because we we brought in Simon Sluger and that kind of put me down the peck in order to third, fourth, and I wasn't really doing too much, and I kind of. Deck had messaged me before about about his gloves at the time with links and they wanted to start like a YouTube and, and do some training videos there and I went down for one and ever since that video I was kind of like not hooked on it but I, I really liked the idea of it because I was kind of getting myself it was one way to get myself out there and and, and maybe see something as a as a backup from football yeah and then lockdown came straight away and me and him. Like we, we were both living in Southampton at the time for lockdown, so it made it quite easy to to go out and and film some videos there. And I grew a following from that. And on on like TikTok, like he he was obviously doing it way before me, and his his following's incredible, like like really impressive. And that kind of I was at a point where I was at loot and thinking like, is this really going to work out? And I was kind of thinking of backup plans and that was that was one of them, like playing maybe part-time football conference south and getting paid for that and doing that on the side. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I was, I was at a point where I was going to give up football. I, was, I like, spoke to my parents and was like, I'm, I don't think I want to do it anymore. Like I've, I've got no love for it. And yeah. I think that, like, that comes back to, I, I fell back in love with it from coming on against Chelsea in the FA Cup. And that kind of got me like, oh, like that taste for it, like, I thought, yeah, I, I do want to do this. Like, it was, it's so worth it. Do you think that's that that negative is uh, because you came through almost through COVID and if Probably, when you, yeah. it's a hard time for every so everyone hard, yeah. in the world, but in football, when you don't know when you're going to return to football and you had this uh, outlet of going to training with Deck and keeping up, uh, doing what you're doing, but you then see a different side to the game yeah. and you're like, this is actually quite enjoyable. Yeah. I think, yeah, like seeing what he does, like is really enjoyable. Like it does take a lot more work than you, you kind of think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seeing a different side because I've I've only known I've got I left school and went straight to football. Like I've only known football and seeing that that kind of side of it is a is a different side and it just really interested me and kind of turned my head a little bit. But yeah, like I said, playing that one game against Chelsea like just made me just change that. I just thought, like, how good is this? Yeah. Just you got the like it's funny, it's like you get the bug back for it, you fall yeah. in love with the game again and you're like, yeah. Yes, this is it. This yeah, is there's me. so many times where you fall out of love with it yeah. and fall back in love with it. Like. Yeah, of course. You it, that happens all the time throughout your career. You'll have moments in your career you're like, This is hard this, like where where's yeah. what's next? What am yeah. I doing next? Uh, I'm out of contract, I've not got a club or I've not I've not been playing that well. So like security you need you like as a keeper, I like having that security of knowing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, right, and then from there, you've just talked about it, but I want to talk about your gloves then. This is Matt Smith, and this is the glove review on the Yours Mine Away podcast. So you're sponsored by what gloves? Lynx. Yeah, and how long have you been wearing them for? Probably about three years now, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are they like as a supplier? Are they good? Yeah, really good. I think at first it was, they brought out just gloves that were like your... Uh, your Adidas like gardening glove kind of ones that come up to here and I, I wasn't a big fan of that but they brought out uh, like a, a hybrid cut and like I just said just I like a traditional white goalkeeper glove yep. and they put a bit of black trim on it and and I wore them for probably like two years and now they've got a new model out like an updated version of that model which is just a, an all white glove with, with hybrid cut and they're I really like them because they're quite into their content creation as well so yeah, that would have tied like, in YouTube and stuff yep. like that yeah yeah uh, what size gloves do you wear? 
in that glove, I'm a 10. But like I've tried cells on before and I'll probably be like an eight and a half in a cells wow. glove. Yeah, like, really? Like the fingers on cells gloves are so long. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's why they're perfect for me. Yeah, not for me. No. <laughs> uh, and then uh, what what type of gloves do you, cut wise, do you wear? What palms? It's, yeah, like a hybrid of a roll finger yeah. and a, a flat palm. So like the kind of a flat palm there, a roll finger on the little finger and out finger and the two middle like. Yep. A hybrid cut, at the yeah. top, yeah. Yeah, it's a weird cut. It is it? a weird cut, but it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. it is incredible. You get more coverage on the ball. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have any input into how you like your gloves and what type of gloves you would like them to make? Are they quite open to those calls? Or they, they yeah, they they uh, they spoke to me like about because they obviously liked that kind of futuristic goalkeeping glove, and I said like honestly, like you're gonna make a if you make this glove like it's like gonna be such a solid glove, it's gonna be like such a staple kind of glove. Yeah. And they came up with the design and came up with like the hybrid cut. I think they they looked at a few other gloves and looked at other palms and said like, yeah, we actually like this palm. And they they, they went with that. And yeah, I've I've used them gloves ever since. Oh, perfect. Right, I want to know some of the geeky information about right. So, how how many times you change your gloves? How many games in? I'm a bit weird. Like, I people have like a match pair and a training pair, and sometimes I'll just have a pair that I wear a week and then wear in a game. No way. See, that's different. But I'm a bit, I don't know, I'm a bit weird. Like if I am if I like a pair of gloves, I'll, I'll just keep that a lot. Yeah. Because I know that they're going to work like, yeah. rather than risking You've got confidence pair. in them. Yeah. And do you look after them? Or do you, are you just one of these ones that can just put them back on your peg and just get on with it? No, nah, I, I take them home every day and I I don't like, I don't get in the shower with them and stuff like that. I just put them in the, like a quick 15 minute and like a cold wash in the washing machine. If you wash them in the washing machine, yeah. yeah. Oh, cold wash. We cold wash, that yeah, it's yeah. fine, yeah. Yeah, your gloves have got to look white. You've got to have good clean tools, haven't you? Yeah. To make you feel the best. Yeah, you feel more confident in yeah. it. Nice clean. You like a pair of white boots as well or a coloured pair of boots and a white pair of gloves. You're quite... You white like pair, what you like. Yeah, yeah, I like... Boots I like, I just like the old school. I don't know if they're called like hyper venoms or something like that, or yeah, hyper visions or something mental like that. But I, yeah, I, I go through like all the the boot companies on Instagram and and see what that they've got kind of thing rather than new pairs. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Obviously, you you bring back like the old CTRs and like the hyper venoms, like you said. Yeah, like yeah. You've got a, an old Nike pair that you you obviously enjoy wearing, and you try mm. and get more and more of them. Like I've still I've still worn the the ones that I wore at Barnes. I still wear them now. Do you? Yeah. Like, and that's been like you slip uh, comfy. Yeah, they're so comfy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I like a new pair of boots that are like I I don't like wearing boots that are too broken in mm -hmm. or too comfy they're like my training boots but i like newer boots that are a bit stiffer yeah i'm trying to break in a pair at the moment they're killing my feet are they killing your feet <laughs> yeah. what are they they're the, they're the same just in like like a limey green kind of color yeah. of, of the same version i've got but they're like a half size smaller so yeah. i've got them on the boot structure every day oh, every day get them in. in the bath you've worn them in the I've bath worn yet? In, not, not yet this is a weird thing that, that footballers yeah. do by the way is we wear our football boots in the bath break to break them, them in, in. yeah yeah Soften them and also mould them to your feet. Mould them to your feet, yeah. It's the amount of times I've seen footballers sat in a bath just works, or in yeah. a, a bucket of water with hot water and their football boots on. So strange. Do you have the boot steamer now as well? No, we haven't had one of them. Good. They're good. Good, yeah. yeah. Just put them out like five minutes before you get to train. Just softens them softens so them nice. Up, yeah. in, the, in the winter, it's nice as well. Nice warm. Cozy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any uh, superstitions? Um, I always put my shirt on last, but any other superstition, like with kit wise I'd, I'd forget yeah i'd know i'd know i'd forget like oh shit i put my, my left one on first and my right one have you got any uh weird things that you do do before a game you know like stuff that you have to eat or your pre-match meal is that the same every week not really I, i'll have probably like always have pasta on a friday night I, I do actually do one thing i i do this thing before before kickoff i'll jump off my left leg off my right leg and then back pedal to the into the goal and then a few deep breaths and then away I go <laughs> yeah it's it's like I've spoke about this before but like I, I always measure my, my goal no matter what goal I'm playing and, and if yeah. I've played there before I still measure the goal I have to make just sure it's still eight yards wide <laughs> just in case and I still have to like measure the height as in like you know when you touch it and I, I'm, I a, I'm, it. A, I'm a position where I can if I can just reach it I go over tiptoes you know it's like, the right, know height. It's the right <laughs> yeah see like it's weird things that as a goalie you don't realize you do it I do this every game but then like I'll, I'll even once we've done like the lineups, I'll walk back to my goal, but I'll measure from the 18 yard box to the penalty spot, make sure that's six yards. Yeah. And then I'll then in my head, just measure the penalty spot to the six yard box. And I'll have to like know that like, this is the right measurements. This is like 
where I'm working. That is unique. I like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, I think it's just, it's not a superstition because I don't have to, I don't do it every game. Yeah. But Sometimes I just think, you just find yourself doing it. I just it. do it. And it's just become a pattern now that yeah. I just check my surroundings. Uh, do you like, uh, I want to speak to you about fan interactions and stuff like that, especially during a game. Do you, do you hear a lot of what fans say? And do you like yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mind it at all. Like, they're going to give you banter and at the end of the day, like, yeah. That's what they're there for. They're there to kind of put you off your game, but I just find it funny, really. Funny, isn't it? Yeah. See, like the the grounds that you play at in like National League and lower, oh, and, that, and you can hear it's so, it's much so worse. worse yeah. It? yeah. <laughs> you can hear everything that they say. They're on top of you. Literally. Yeah. They might as well be on the pitch next to the guy. Half the time, it's not even offensive. It's nah. just strange. It's yeah. But where they come up with some of the stuff, you think like you're a grown man. How have you said that? How yeah. have you come up with your head and it's come out of your mouth and thought that would be class? Have you heard any chance that you remember? Just. Just the classic goal kick one, like yeah, <laughs> it's crap, isn't it? It's they need so to think bad. of something a bit new for that, right? And a few more bits about the goalkeeping side. Do you like video analysis? In from matches, yeah, I think I, I don't mind watching a few training sessions back, but yeah, the match analysis, like from a game, and but sometimes if you've had a stinker and you've lost three 0 like you don't really want to watch it. But I think it is important to be like. Yeah, to, to go through it and, and have a look so you kind of get a brighter idea. But as a goalkeeper, I think you know when you've done you, something you, good you've or done bad. Something yeah. good or bad, yeah. It's hard because like video analysis is everywhere now. And yeah. you can either look too much before a game at the opposition and it gets in your head. Yeah, I think that's the that's the downside of it of you become like, Okay, well he's gonna do that. He's and then you find yourself like gambling and that's the worst thing probably to do this is where i think that the the goalie coach plays a massive role throughout the week is that they'll watch that clip on the sunday before they've even planned monday's training session yeah and throughout the week they're they're putting hints into the, yeah, the training it session in there, yeah, and integrating yeah. it into a session of like if a team scores a lot of cutbacks from monday to friday you should be working on a lot of cutbacks but you yeah. don't even realize as a goalie that how clever the coaches are planning yeah, ahead yeah. i find this sort of stuff that like I, I love my goalie coach doing. And then after the game on Saturday, be like, we did a lot of cutbacks this week. See that save you made? And you're like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. I like what you've done there. No, uh, yeah, there's so a lot of thought that goes, but obviously there's teams of it now that yeah. that do the research and it is incredible to, to look at it that way of like where they get their joy and success of other teams. And yeah. Uh, and then like you said about the analysis afterwards, it's so easy to to just look at negatives or yeah. only think, oh, I've, I look at my positive stuff. Yeah. Like there's a lot of stuff that you can reflect on. And there's also sometimes when you know, just don't look at it. Like it yeah. doesn't need looking at, I've either played okay or I've had a bad game or a good game. I don't need to look at it sometimes. Yeah. You do reflect. I think, yeah, I think the only time you like need to look at it is if you're slightly out of position. Cause sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you feel like you're in a good position, but you look back and you think, Oh, I could have been a step back, a step to yep. the left or whatever and hindsight and then the other thing is maybe just having a better picture of like distribution and receiving the ball and like can you scan your shoulder here like he, he was on and just kind of putting that picture in your head yeah other i agree than, when, when to kick it and when to play short yeah sometimes you in a game you're caught up in what's going on around you and yeah. the, the emotion of the game and if you're getting put under a pressure for a bit and you just kick your one first long, is, I'm you, done. yeah go safe and then Afterwards, someone can show you, look, that pass is on and then that can then create something yeah. for us. And, but that's the the best way of using analysis as a goal. I keeper. think it is, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what's your uh, releases away from football? Golf. Uh, nothing too strange, like just doing nice things going. So I'm living in North Greenwich at the moment, going into Greenwich and, and, around, and around London and just finding nice, nice places to go for walks and stuff like that, yeah, with a girlfriend. Not a bad little place to explore around there as well. Nice, yeah, really nice. Greenwich is lovely, yeah. yeah. Blackheath, place like that, yeah, really yeah. nice. Class. Uh, and lastly, I just wanted to speak uh, about Cholton a little bit more. You, you transfer this summer uh, to Cholton and uh, your hopes for this season. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that, obviously, football, everything changes always, but, like, obviously, at Cholton as a club, it's a fantastic club and it must be a great place to, to be part of. Yeah, so it's a massive club, and that that kind of that was a massive uh, massive play of why I, why I chose to join Charlton. It's a massive club, and the the gaffer obviously rang me up and and sold the club to me and told me all his aspirations for this season, where he wants the club to go, and yeah, that obviously played a massive part of why I wanted to go there, and and yeah, like you said, it's a massive club, and it's hopefully this season we do get promoted, 
and and get success because last season going through the playoffs and that it was, it was hard to take but yeah hopefully go with that one step further with Charlton this no, season I, I wish you all the best for this season right and then finally just before we finish I always ask this question but what does the goalkeepers union mean to you oh, I think it's everything like, I think it's you know that there's two or three keepers that are fighting for that number one shirt and you're not always going to be the number one so and if you're number two and you obviously are you're going to be training hard and wanting to be number one but like I said, with Luton and Barnsley, that good changing room and, and that good uh, environment on the training pitch, like you want to be number one, but there's ways of going about it, like putting training hard and getting in the gaffer's eye line like that is, is the right way to do it. But and like I want to do it for the team. I want to see the team do well and I want to see the keeper. He's, he's there for a reason. Like, I want to see them do well as well. Yeah. No, thank you very much for coming on anyway. No, it's been a, a really good episode and a really good insight into how you are as a person and the type of goalie you are, mate. I hope you've enjoyed being on. No, I enjoyed it, yeah. Thank you very much. I just want to say a massive thank you to our sponsors, Mito Red Light Company and Forged Irish Stout uh, for sponsoring the pod. They really do help us uh, behind the scenes. This has been the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. And make sure you go and subscribe. Uh, it really helps us. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye. What a save from Mark Howard. 